welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast Special Edition Series, where I go over every 32 NFL teams off-season preview and predictions. This is the fourth of 32 shows. And now up is the Buffalo Bills, who have an interesting off-season ahead. You know the drill. I go over each team's for agents to be, franchise tag candidate, trade candidate, release candidate, extension candidate, best draft fit, best free agent fit, bold prediction of the offseason, and more. Our notable free agents on the Bills. Gabe Davis, Daquan Jones, Leonard Floyd, and Micah Hyde. That's four guys that are um, important that they need to uh, either take care of or address in terms of free agency this offseason. Needs, wide receiver, defensive end, safety, defensive tackle. Ironically, the positions that all those guys play. Um, the franchise tag candidate on this team, to me, is very easy. And that is Daquan Jones. Daquan Jones had a career year this year on the Bills. He really um, put himself in position to get a payday. But I think they want to franchise tag him before... Um, Um, they pay him, um, so, um, yeah, just over a C grade this, um, two years ago, but he got hurt this year and didn't really play a lot. He had three sacks. He had a grade of an 86, but I think they're going to franchise tag him because he got hurt and then they're going to see how he looks coming off that injury and then they'll make their decision to pay him or not or maybe they'll just outright pay him in the off season um trade candidate um i'm gonna say stefan Diggs. that's an easy one for me um i think that um Diggs. And Josh Allen obviously had chemistry issues, but they downplayed it and downplayed it and downplayed it. Diggs is making a lot of money. Um, I don't think he's a release candidate because I think they can get something for Diggs, like a second or a third round pick. I think the team like the Giants might be interested. I think a team like the Jets is going to be interested. Maybe the Steelers. Maybe... Um, Somebody we're not thinking of that could be a piece away. Like, who knows? Maybe the Cowboys. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of teams I can think of. Maybe the Ravens. But I don't think they're going to trade them to the AFC. If anything, that's why I don't see them trading to the Jets. I don't think they're going to trade in division either. So I would look at a team like the Giants or the... Um, Seahawks doesn't make sense. Arizona, if they want to make a win now move. Um, Green Bay, maybe. Maybe Minnesota. With Minnesota, when it were that yeah, that wouldn't make sense. <laughs> Him going back to the Vikings doesn't make sense. Um, Bears make a lot of sense for Stephon Diggs. Um, the trade doesn't really make sense. Atlanta makes sense for Diggs. But yeah, there's a couple teams I just came up with, especially in the NFC, that make some sense for Stephon Diggs. Release candidate. Um, I'm going to say Mitch Morse. Um, I think Mitch Morse is somebody that um, is getting up there in age. Um, former Kansas City Chief, obviously. Um, he is 31 years old. Um he signed a two-year extension. He's going to be a free agent after um, the season that's coming up. But he's getting up there in age. And um, he's making 
a little over $9 million a year, and maybe the Bills want to get younger at the interior of the offensive line. So I'm going to say the release candidate on this team is Mitch Morse. Extension candidate, to me, this is easy. Greg Russo. Greg Russo was awesome this past season. Six sacks, a forced fumble, five assists, 30 tackles, um, a B grade in pro football focus. He really was a good pick by the Bills a couple years ago, and the 2021 class is up for extension. So I think Greg Russo is an easy, easy extension candidate on this team, although Daquan Jones is one too, and maybe they would franchise tag somebody else. But I think Russo, to me, is very simple. So, Russo is a very easy call. I do expect him to get paid. He was good in 2022 also, and he was solid as a rookie. So, he's getting better by the year. So, the Bills better pay Greg Russo. Get, give him the bag, and to me, they got to keep him. So, Greg Russo, to me, is the easy extended candidate on this team. Good draft fit. I think... Braylon Trice out of Washington, edge rusher, is a good draft fit. Um, I don't think the team is going to bring back Leonard Floyd. Um, Leonard Floyd just bounces around a lot, and I think they need youth there, and him and Russo together would be really fun. So I think Braylon Trice is a good draft fit. I had Tyler Guyton going there in my last mock draft, and I think Guyton does make sense there as well. Um, Graham Barton. If um, they want to get rid of Mitch Morse or Connor McGovern and put him in the interior of the line. So I think Graham Barton makes some sense. Um, I also think Adoni Mitchell makes some sense if they need a replacement for Gabe Davis. Um... I also think that Kamari Lasseter out of Georgia makes some sense there. Troy Fatanu of Washington makes sense as well. So um, the Bills have some uh, interesting draft guys. Chris Braswell makes some sense there too. Darius Robinson out of Missouri. Um... I think um, Zach Frazier out of West Virginia, Chop Robinson out of Penn State. So there's a lot of guys. Roman Wilson out of Michigan. That makes sense. And I say some of these guys that are ranked in like the 30s, 40s, in case they decide to trade back and somebody desperate trades off for somebody. A free agent fit. Antoine Winfield Jr. I think this is a really good free agent fit. Um, he's a safety. He's young. The Bucks, I think, have a lot of decisions to make in terms of free agents. And Winfield probably is their best player that's going to be a free agent. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to franchise tag him. And they may franchise tag Mike Evans or Baker Mayfield instead. And, um, they might lose Micah Hyde as a free agent. So... I think um, Winfield makes a lot of sense. I think if Josh Allen or Brian Burns were to become available, those guys make sense as well. Um, I think that, um, say if they, um, Daquan Jones leaves, um, maybe Chris Jones or Christian Wilkins. Or Justin Matabuke. Leonard Williams. I mean, would they get into the Chase Young business? Bryce Huff. Hollywood Brown. Calvin Ridley's going to get a big payday from somebody. I don't see them going there. I mean, if they don't want to go big with Winfield, they could go Carmen Cool or Cameron Cool or Kyle Duggar. Or Geno Stone of the Ravens. He's going to be a free agent as well. And I think he's going to get paid. 
by somebody. So the Bills do have a lot of options here in free agency. But my bold prediction for them, I love the fit of Winfield Jr. there, and I think they're going to make a big splash for him. I'm going to say that the team signs Winfield Jr. for your $78 million. Um, They have a needed safety. Winfield's the best safety. They're a piece away. Their defense was um, not great. And Winfield's only 25 years old. He'd be an upgrade over Micah Hyde at this point of his career. You have him and Trey White in the secondary. And Jordan Poyer, Rasul Douglas, who they got in the trade with the Packers. And Taron Johnson. I think that's a huge deal if they were to sign him. So I'm going to say that they sign um, Winfield Jr. Four years, $78 million in free agency. Futures potential for the Bills. Um, Josh Allen MVP, if he's double-digit odds, it's similar to Lamar. And if they're over 15 to 1 for the Super Bowl, I would look at that. But they're probably going to be at like 10 to 1 or 12 to 1 for the Super Bowl. Um, they'll probably be favorites in that division over the Dolphins because. If they do sign somebody like Winfield, I think they're going to recognize that and recognize the fact that uh, Tua still has limitations and the Dolphins have big decisions making free agency. So um, I think that um, the Bills are probably going to be favorites in that division. I don't think they're going to have a minus by them. I could see it being like plus 135 or something like that. But if it is that, I, I'll take it. I'll take it if it's. Plus, anything over plus 130 for the Bills in their division in 2024, I'll absolutely take that. Um, James Cook is a guy that really emerged for the Bills this past season at running back. I wonder what um, his preseason odds to lead the league in rushing is going to be. In 2024. That's a guy I'm looking at. For futures. Um, I could see Diggs on a different team. So I really wouldn't. Touch Diggs in terms of. Um, so. I would leave Diggs alone. Um, if they were to draft a wide receiver. I would look at that wide receiver. For offensive rookie of the year. Whether it's Adoni Mitchell or Roman Wilson, Troy Franklin, Brian Thomas Jr., somebody like that. If one of those guys ended up on the Bills, I would consider one of those players for Offensive Rookie of the Year and even defensive rookie of the year if they landed the right player like if Braswell was on the Bills or somebody like that I would take a look maybe Kool-Aid Mc... Kool-Aid McKinstry doesn't make sense for the Bills but if um, they ended up with Braswell I would give that a look for defensive rookie of the year and then James Cook offensive player of the year is probably going to be like 50 to 1 or something crazy like that so I that's another one I would consider. And then Sean McDermott is somebody to watch in terms of hot seat. Bill Belichick is sitting there for somebody next season. It looks like he's going to take this year off. But if the Bills don't make the Super Bowl, let alone the AFC Championship game, I could see them making a move. And the thought of Belichick coaching that team with Josh Allen and some of the guys they have, I mean, that is a scary threat to uh, Mahomes and Andy Reid in the AFC. I mean, not that um, they are not a threat right now. It's they, they're a threat, but they're not as big as a threat as they perceived to be when they were favored to beat them in the playoffs this year, um, or this past year. So that's one to keep an eye out for a potential Bilicek destination. We're going to be doing that in this series as well as possible, like, who's in play to, to hire Bill Belichick and, um, next offseason. I think the Bills cannot be ruled out 
of this discussion as well as maybe a team or two in their division. Ooh, keep an eye out for that. Um, so McDermott, absolutely a hot seat guy going into 2024. And then obviously the other coach that's sitting there is Mike Rabel, who for some reason doesn't have a job as well. Um, so there you have it for the Buffalo Bills. Next up will be the Carolina Panthers. Oof. 